Welcome to Stalinstadt. Well, of course, it's not called Stalinstadt anymore. It's called Eisenhüttenstadt, a city in the far east of East Germany. Let me show you around and tell you what's so special about this city. In 1950, the East German government decided to construct the Eisenhüttenkombinat Ost, a steel factory, and a residential town near Fürstenberg, next to the river Oder. The completely new city was designed from scratch from the drawing board and would be the first socialist city on German soil. The city would be called Stalinstadt, after Joseph Stalin, the leader of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union. As part of the destalinization in 1961, the city was renamed to Eisenhüttenstadt, which also included the neighboring village of Fürstenberg. I wanted to see what this socialist model city looks like today, the only German city that was newly founded after World War II. While staying in Berlin, I took the train to Eisenhüttenstadt. It took me about one and a half hours to get there. Stalinstadt was planned to be the ideal city in which work and living comfort with social quality of life would be connected in a political cultural community. The city was planned for 25,000 to 30,000 inhabitants. Next to the four different housing complexes, a fifth one was already needed at the end of the 1950s. Also a sixth and a seventh housing complex were built. A number eight was planned in the 80s, but was never realized. I found an architectural guide that I used for selecting the most special locations. We start at the Lindenallee, previously Leninallee. This 500 meters, about 0.3 miles, long street was planned as the main and shopping street of the new city. In the middle of the street, there's the Friedrich Wolf Theater, the theater that was opened in 1955 and still has this function after a number of renovations. A little more southwards, you will find a small pavilion. As of the 1960s, behind these windows, the East German car manufacturer IFA showcased their car models like Trabant and Wartburg, for which the average East German had to wait 12 years. From the Lindenallee, looking in a northerly direction, you can see one of the blast furnaces of the Eisenhüttenkombinat. Providing work for more than 2,500 people, it nowadays still is the region's biggest employer. At the beginning of the street, there are two larger buildings. The Lindenzentrum, once a department store, nowadays is home to a number of stores and a library. There's a colorful mosaic on one of its facades. It's called Produktion in Frieden, Production in Peace. On the other side of the street, you will find the former Hotel Lunik. With 110 beds, a restaurant, a cafe, a bar and an intershop, it was the city's most prestigious hotel. It opened in 1963, but unfortunately it is unused since the mid-90s. The Rathaus, City Hall, is worth a short visit. There is a model of the city and a leaded window originating from one of the demolished buildings. When you look upstairs, you'll see a mosaic called Unser Neues Leben, Our New Life. The Platz des Gedenkens, the Square of Remembrance, formerly called Platz der Deutsch-Sowjetischen Freundschaft, the Square of German-Soviet Friendship, is located in the middle of Housing Complex 1. In the square stands a memorial with an obelisk, with a burial chamber on each side, with the remains of more than 4,000 Soviet soldiers and prisoners of war. In the past, the square was used for demonstrations, parades and as a place of assembly. Nowadays, it has almost completely lost its function. Although Eisenhüttenstadt is only 70 years old, a considerable number of buildings are under monument protection. The population of Eisenhüttenstadt once was 53,000. Now the town has only got 23,000 inhabitants, which makes it a relatively quiet place. One third of all housings has been torn down and you can see a lot of buildings standing vacant. This former school, for example, which was named after Russian cosmonaut Yuri Gagarin, has been empty for years. In 2020 it has become a monument, but it is rapidly falling into disrepair. This piece of art is called Entwicklung der menschlichen Gesellschaft, Development of Human Society.
socialism and religion don't go well together, so the plans of the first socialist city of Germany did not contain a church. Christians had to go to the church in Fürstenberg, but at the end of the 70s, construction of a church financed by West Germany began. A church tower was not allowed, therefore the church bells had to stay on the ground. The Museum Utopie und Alltag, Utopia and Daily Life, is located in a former day nursery. In the end of the 90s, it has been completely renovated, but a lot of original elements are kept intact. The museum contains a great collection about everyday life in the GDR. The permanent exhibition tells the story of the GDR from 1945 till 1990 and focuses on a lot of different subjects like education, transportation, communication, work, housing and consumption. Also American actor Tom Hanks visited the museum in 2014 when he came to Eisenhüttenstadt for the second time because he is fascinated about its architecture and history. People in Eisenhüttenstadt, or Iron Hut City as Tom Hanks calls it, are proud of this. Another museum located in Fürstenberg, the municipal museum, Städtisches Museum, has an exhibition that shows more about the history of Eisenhüttenstadt. I will put the links to both museums in the description. When approaching the municipal hospital, it doesn't give you the feeling that you are about to enter a sterile and chilly atmosphere building. And in fact you aren't. Also, in and around the hospital, dating back to the end of the 1950s, you can find many pieces of art. So, what did the Eisenhüttenstadt people do in their leisure time? In the north of the city there is a business park where you find a bowling alley which is still in business. For me it was worth literally going the extra mile to see the mosaic next to the entry. In the same area you can find this concrete artwork, standing in front of the former house of sports. It shows six different sports, gymnastics, soccer, athletics, weightlifting, ski jumping and dancing. The text on the facade of this building already tells you that this was and partially still is the place where people could go out for dinner and some drinks. A local housing association now has its office in the main building. Walking around in Eisenhüttenstadt gave me a little bit of feeling of being in another non-German country. But it didn't feel uncomfortable on the contrary. That might be related to the fact that the buildings are not so tall, mostly consisting out of four to five floors. There are no narrow streets. And what also gives a feeling that you are not trapped are the many, many, many passageways under the buildings that are always surrounded by green grass surfaces. Back in my hotel room in Berlin after a long day leaves us with the question, should you visit Eisenhüttenstadt? Well, if you're a fan of architecture or if you're interested to absorb the special atmosphere of the city, then you should definitely go. Next to a museum visit, planning a visit of the steelworks can also be a good combination. It's currently still not possible, but I was told that they will probably be soon organizing factory tours again. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next one.